Well, 8.31. Well, hot on the release of the um, remastered reissues uh, last year, the Hallelujah Picassos are back for 2012 with a um, another remastering, but this is of a whole bunch of covers that they did back in the day, and it's a digital release. Peter McLennan joining me from Hallelujah Picasso's. Welcome back to the show, Peter. Good morning, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is so this is pretty um, pretty exciting. The Hallelujah Picasso's were very strong on covers from sort of across the spectrum, but done in the Hallelujah Picasso style, right? Yeah, I mean most of the covers on here are ones that we basically songs that we love from various artists. Some of them sort of date back to like the really early days of the band when we were called the Rattlesnakes. And we sort of like most bands you start out by playing lots of covers until you sort of develop your own yes. songs and style and yeah. Some of them, like, you know, that Peanut Butter, which is the first song on there from One Way Streets, um, which is, they were like a garage punk band from the mid-60s. Which is playing Ohio. playing playing along in the background now. Um, um, you can, As you can hear, it's not a garage punk song anymore. No. It's, it's a reggae song. It sort of was when we played in, like, in the early days in the Rattlesnakes, and then about a year or two later when we changed to the Picassos, we sort of revisited it and came up with that version, which... Ended up being really pop- popular for us on student radio as well. And it was handed over to radio on cassette tapes, is that right? Yeah, we, that was before we had a record deal. So we basically, there's a friend of ours, Matthew Titley Jones, who put up some money for us to help us out because he was really liked our music yeah. and funded that one, which was very generous of him. And we released it as a cassette EP that we did ourselves. You, you go to um, uh, any radio, including student radio now with a cassette, no chance of getting that played because there isn't a cassette player yeah, in the house. <laughs> I, when, I, when I found the real to reel of that, so we could go and, because I, I didn't have a decent copy of it, we had to take it to step to get them to digitise it, and it was yeah. such an old tape, they had to like bake it before they could run it through the reel to reel, which is basically, as I understand... Well, putting you, it in an oven? You, yeah, you bake the tape, quite literally. What, what does that do to it? It's basically if an old reel-to-reel tape, the oxide particles that make up the tape, if you put them on a tape machine that's an old tape, they'll just basically all fall off and coat the tape head with crap. Yeah. So you bake it to basically bake the oxide onto the tape, as I understand it. Oh, okay. So it basically means it stabilises the tape so you can run it through a tape machine without the tape falling apart. Could I do that to my own cassette tapes at home? I think you'd the- end up with a pile of plastic. <laughs> 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 and then you'd have it, to call it art. It might take a few to get get it right, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically revisiting it that way and, and digitising it. That's like the first wow. time I've heard it. But we, when, we when, I found, and... when I found the reel to reel tape, it was like I still had like the original tape order for um, doing four hundred cassettes, and we sold all those. Yeah, right. Which, you know, if you sell four hundred copies of a record now, you're doing really well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, and where was it stored? How was it stored? You mean uh, the reel to reel? Yeah, I sat in the in, in dark cupboard and. Room in my house. Wasn't down in the basement getting wet or No, anything. no, I don't no. store tapes like that. It's a really <laughs> bad way to store them. Same yeah. with records, they end up with mould all over them. Yeah, exactly. Um, were you in, at the recording studio at the moment that you, you heard it come alive again? I didn't hear it come alive. We got um, Steve McGoffick Stebbings to do the transfer. He's done quite a lot of um, archival stuff. I know he's done some work with John Baker on some other things that he's involved with, like the Doug Jerobine project. Yeah. Um, and he basically gave me back. Um, a USB stick with it on, sort of like plugged it into my computer at work and had to listen to it and going, wow, that's like the wow. first time ever I've heard it like CD quality. And would, would you have needed to have done something to it in the process as well? Um, I think he ran it through the Pro Tools computer, but he basically, once he did two passes of the real to real tape and gave me some notes in terms of what he'd done to the audio, but he yeah. didn't actually do anything major to it. I did, I did a bit of remastering work on it myself in terms of bringing up the volume levels and that is but, really cool. You know, basically, because it's coming off tape, it still sounds really good. Because you know, things that are recorded to tape have a lot of natural yeah. warmth to them. Amazing. So you've actually you know, you've done that process of taking something from an old te- technology to a new technology, and that'll last for however long. And then one day you'll have to think about. How yeah, to and take then it Google to the will delete week. everything, and the internet will be gone, and we'll be back to zero, you know, back to zero. Yeah, back to that reel to reel. Okay, so so um, peanut butter, that being the first track on the album. What other covers? Um, I mean, there's all sorts of ones. Like there's um, Bo Diddley, Who Do You Love. There's um, a couple of songs from the Sonics, who are garage band from the 60s, who are actually playing in all... I think they're playing in New Zealand very soon in April. Um, there's um, Talk In This Town, which is a Greg Johnson song, which we used to do, basically because um, the song says, you know, people can talk in this town. Yes. Which we used to have a lot of people gossiping about us, especially our lead singer, Roland, because he was quite a charismatic man around town, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> And I used to hear all sorts of rubbish talked about him. You know, people come up to me going, hey, I heard Roland, blah, 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 and going, oh, shut up, you know. And we started playing that song because, you know, it's it's a song that Greg Johnson wrote. And, you know, he had, people used to gossip about him as well because yeah. he was a man about town. And that's why he moved away. Well, you know. <laughs> well, probably one of the reasons why. Um, yeah, they, yeah, it's, and that, that, that 
track featured on a B-side to an EP, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of these songs were basically... We were sort of guys that grew up listening to, like, records where, you know, you'd buy the A-side and there'd be something, you know, cool on the B-side that was, like, you know, a single-only release, and that's sort of something we wanted to do with our own releases in terms of recording B-sides, even though, of course, you're talking about a CD and you don't have a B-side physically, but yeah, it's the, it's the idea of it. So now, now that you've gone through the process of... Um Come, making these tracks come alive again. The reissue last year, and um, or you know the uh, re-digitizing, remastering, and and now this collection as well. Surely the next step is. I know we talked about this last time, but to reform and celebrate all of this. Yes, as soon as we get Coca-Cola to sign on as sponsors, it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it will happen. It's it's one of the projects that we're working on as well. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's coming. I'm not going to put a date on it, but it's coming. And this is a digital-only release. Yeah. Um, you've, you've also made that a little bit special with some artwork as well. Yeah, I mean, with the, the first one we did, Rewind the Hate Man, last year, that came out on CD and digital, and they had like a little booklet that you could get with a CD and a digital version of the booklet as well. Yeah. And we've done the same thing with this release. It comes with an e-book that's got a whole lot of rare photographs. Quite a lot of them haven't been published before, and it's also got some liner notes that we put together about the origin of some of the covers as well. I mean, some of them... Are quite fun like you know when we were doing um who do you love we did that at, um at frisbee studios which used to be in this above this garage and who is it in albert street yeah which was they basically had a really cool late track studio and we went in there and i think i think we did that and um it's a man's world we basically much did them, both of them in one take no vocal overdubs just did them live and i think johnny added a bit of piano to one of them and we basically recorded like two songs in four hours pretty much the fastest recording session we ever had that was on the lovers plus ep What's the story with covers? Do you need permission from the original artist, or how does that work? Well, you basically need to make sure that you've got the publishing information correct when you're in terms of releasing it, so that you know that the the royalty chain is going back to the original songwriter, etc. Yeah. I mean, in the case of something like It's a Man's World, you know, you go, oh, that's James Brown, and we went and looked it up, and it's actually written by James Brown and Betty Newsom. Right. So you know, it's a song where song where it says it's a man's world, but it wouldn't mean nothing without a woman or a girl, and you're going. You know, that was written by a man yeah. and a woman. Yeah. But yeah, it's a matter of finding that sort of stuff out. Um, what an exciting process, oh, yeah, putting together the artwork as well as um, the music and everything as well. How, so how should people, um, you know, once they've, once they've bought it and downloaded it, how yeah. do they, how, you know, should they repackage it themselves with the artwork? I mean, you know, is it, is it, have you got the folding lines? Well, I mean, that's the, beauty, yeah. that's the beauty of digital releases. You can buy the whole album. You can buy just the songs you like. You can just True. You know, pick and choose. That's the nature of digital music these days. Yeah. But you've got to buy the whole album to get the artwork, I take it. Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Nice. From all kinds of places? Uh, yeah, Online? iTunes, Amplifier, Vodafone, Telecom, uh, Digiorama, Marbex Digital. All, right. all those sort of places, and on Bandcamp as well, if you want to buy it direct from us and give us all the money. Yeah, what do you make of the new streaming services, like Audio and Spotify? That's Will they make me rich, Wemo? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go out and, um, and or you know, when you say go out, go get online and get the, uh, the new Hallelujah, Hallelujah Picasso's Picasso Core Jukebox. That's the one. Peter McLennan, thanks very much for joining us. That's it. There. Nice. Uh, it's now 20 minutes away from nine. Let's play something.